Hey YouTubers, Christian here, Fedhead Ed. Today's topic is an important one, and I think that it's been on the minds of quite a few people lately. That is the potential market crash that might be coming. And I think this video might be one of the more important ones I put on my channel here for a while, so I think it's worth paying attention to, because it potentially could affect everybody, no matter who, where you are, and of course some people more than others, but uh, just important things to pay attention to. So uh, it, it's one of those things that I think are going to be best answered with three main questions that I'm posing. First one is, what is the potential timeline to look at for this crash? And number two, what are potential catalysts to look for? Number three are what are potential precautions that can be taken. Overall, the market flip, it could happen anytime. No one knows. Uh, bubble, it could continue growing, slowly deflate, or just burst. Uh, it could be a situation just like in Japan where it just slowly deflated, but overall no one really knows when it's going to happen and there's no such thing as a free lunch in the market and there's a natural cycle to things. Some things are bought, some things are sold, some companies die, they, some grow, some might you know stay around just for a few years, some of them hundreds, whatever. It's important to know though that you got to make proper picks early and get into at least hold and gain on your wealth. But my opinion is this market flip, it could happen within one to three years. And uh, no one again knows the timing, but the bubble, some folks think that it, it could be something like the Bitcoin crash and or general crypto in 2017, 18, or something like the tulip crash in 1936, 37. Um, the worst case scenario would be that I don't think that's going to happen personally. I think that at least for this year, it's going to continue. Uh, later down the line, it becomes a little more iffy. So with all that being said, this recent crash that happened in terms of the health crisis, it, it, it was about five to six weeks and it took around 35 or so percent of the market. Some companies were hit a lot harder than others, but that's the general. Um, overall though, my forecast here is just based on previous flash crashes, pumps and dumps, boom busts, whatever you want to call them, general human psychology and things that I've learned along the way and as well as general research. But uh, overall, the, there is influence that should be paid attention to of big market movers and some folks that manipulate the market because this does go on. And things like the Wall Street Bets community on Reddit uh, made some things apparent, but there's a lot more that does go on. And um, overall, uh, I'm very happy that there's been an increase in new investors because I think it's very important for people to diversify and the stock market's a great way of making some side money and also uh, planning for the future. And overall though, there's the one issue that eventually there are some people that are going to be holding the bag, either just through bad trades or they hold too long and things drop, whatever. There's many situations, uh, you know, scandals in a company, whatever. But it's important to know that uh, in terms of a crash that the reversal might happen very quickly and people won't realize when it does so it's best to prepare right now. And in terms of potential catalysts that I think that everyone should pay attention to, I certainly am, is that I consider the market kind of like a magician that plays their tricks on the one hand but all the magic's really going on with the other, all a sleight of hand. And in the public hand they're showing and touting you know companies on the media and influencers and all these other folks you know the ones that get all the attention but some of the biggest gainers are going to be the ones that are you know not being paid attention to but it's also important to know that this works for in terms of a crash because they'll be pumping something this way but pulling out on the side over here so giving with one hand taking with the other type of thing Overall, these magicians that I'm talking about are the globalist type folks, the Davos groups, uh, the Bilderberg conference type peoples, uh, the ones that are pushing, you know, the new world order and great reset and all this type of stuff. Uh, it's important to be aware of these folks because they are market movers and uh, what they think does matter. And some of this stuff has already started to happen before 
so uh, it's in the works already of course you know some things can be done to slow it down or whatever depending on what y'all believe on it but uh, there is a way to profit off of this but this potentially could lead to market crash because of the shifting of the money and uh, what they're planning on doing so it's important to know that this whale money has been cashing out quite recently on big peaks and uh, knowing also that around 30 plus percent of US dollars in circulation were literally printed in the last year or so that that's got inflation written all over it and it's already happening in certain markets certain housing you know places and uh, consumer price index of certain objects and uh, also some industrials what the, the the point is it's already happening and um, what what is important though is that this inflation and it could there's also on the other hand deflation that could happen but fed rates things like the cycles like shemita which is a seven year uh cycle um just uh general debts uh less buyers um you know things like the pandemic and uh just taxes and global affairs and um ge general market stuff spacs and many things these these all could be parts of uh, the actual market that might see big dips and lead to other uh, dips leading to kind of a cascade effect. So it's important to notice that in, in my opinion of all these potential catalysts here that I'm talking about, uh, some of the more important ones are the Fed rates and things like the stimulus that's going to be coming in the next few months, a couple months, because uh, that's going to keep it going up higher but once the Fed starts changing on their rates their policies there and especially things like taxes that are going to be coming out pretty soon changes in corporate taxes and just in general but um, these things and things like the the health crisis if for example the new president Biden decides just to say that this is over in the next year or so this is going to totally shift the market so this stuff matters and should be paid attention to I, I said that there's other things too that should be paid attention to but uh, the, these things are and of course there's there's a lot of liquidity going on in the market too and so far it hasn't been too much of an issue in terms of margin and just generals people increase in use and options and things but eventually this stuff will matter too uh, it's important to be aware of how some of these bigger players uh, use media and manipulate psychology and uh, do these things play on people's popular emotion to pump and dump and there's other uh, influencers and you know just traders whatever that do this this stuff matters but the problem is that I think that with all the idea of some companies yes you do want a diamond hand some ones you just do want to trade some of them you just want to sell to get a tax trade you know benefit off of at the end of the year and you know whatever there's many things that can be happening but it's important to know that some people will take advantage of you in these scenarios so know about this and I'm afraid of the end result being like the market bell opens and then Joe v Joe fight each other and they're KO'd before the closing bell type thing and everybody's like trying to run out because it's very important also one of the big catalysts is the decrease in buyers because if somebody's not going to buy what you're trying to sell on the stock market or there's not demand for it the price is going to drop and again cascade effect but it's important to know that no one can be a blind bull and just listen to all these people because take it for what it is it's all just grains of salt everybody's opinion is just their opinions but take in a lot of it aggregate it and then you make the decision your own proper one based on what you believe is right after you got all this stuff and you can hedge your bets with it but it's important to know that again no one knows the future and but due diligence is the number one precaution that can be actually taken and going into the precautions what are those I think the best ones are increasing your personal time and also just growth because that in general will allow you to have the time and uh, just the ambition and you want to be ambitious passionate you have to be patient you gotta listen you gotta learn use your surroundings things so that you want to gain and this is all your number one priority 
but also when it gets into in terms of assets that you want to protect and be prepared for for if a potential crash happens you got to diversify and number one you want to have at least two sources of income to you know depend on if one of them closes off or whatever something happens you can be making money on the side with something else so again stocks is a good way there but also consider monetizing one's knowledge like you know interest your labor uh, whatever you know whatever all this stuff purchase you can make money depending on what you have you can use those skills whatever to make yourself money as well so monetize it and investing it helps because you can hold and you can grow and especially things like uh, usable assets like you know homes and cars vehicles um, just uh, collectibles things in general like you know alcohol tobacco firearms uh, art jewelry precious metals uh, all this stuff this matters it's good to have some of it and of course if you're an enthusiast of some things you know you might uh, have that be a bigger part of you know your net assets but in terms of a prepared portfolio this is where I want to get into uh, how to not just protect oneself but also profit for what happens uh, I think that it's important to in terms of an act the active part of a portfolio because I have an active one and I have passive and I don't know everybody's got their own way of trading but this is just my opinion my active ones I like to have uh, ones that I'll be number one, you know actively trading I also like to have early companies that I get in very early like some SPACs and new IPOs and things when I see they're very good prices or that uh, you know pandemic stocks that drop to a great price and I just want to load up on whatever but uh, the the point is there's always these deals always just have to look for them um, again though there are some other things like industrials and disruptive stocks too that want to have a piece of but in terms of passive part of the portfolio something that usually I like about two to six percent depending and I'm always changing my own portfolio but uh, at least this way uh, if someone just doesn't really want to do much they'll increase the passive side of their portfolio but I recommend two to six percent of all of the following uh, number one uh, S&P 500 index type fund or you know ETFs and there's also uh, international ETFs and things like bond ETFs and also get into like series EE bonds and um, other types of ETFs to uh, let's see REITs um, metals again and uh, there's I love military stocks there's good blue chip stocks uh, there's cryptos um, things like that uh, two to six percent depending on what one feels comfortable with I think is a good position and that's what I consider so uh, how to maintain a portfolio and continue making money now pre crash potentially and if it does happen how to potentially make money during it and after I always believe in reinvesting three-fifths of the profits whatever I make uh, I always reinvest I do maintain minimum monthly withdrawal rates uh, sometimes it's you know two thousand sometimes it's ten thousand whatever depending on how things go but everybody depending on what they're you know uh, what they do that that is what it is and overall that's a good way so that you can have some money on the side and you can keep playing with it if something happens but you're also slowly taking some out and eventually you'll pass out your initial investment and then you'll just be playing on profits very important but also uh, you got to remove about uh, one-fifth of those profits from every big big sale and uh, including things like options because I at least the way that I look at it is when I make really good profits especially on options I'll cash some out and then I'll either let the rest just stay on margin or I'll get something that I want to hold long term and uh, I just like multiplying profits that way but that's me uh, and then also you got to reserve about one-fifth of your assets in cash and highly liquid assets and that's where the cashing out and stuff also plays a role because then when the deals come anyone will be ready because no matter who it is I'm always uh, like I always like having some because you never know when they'll come 
So the important thing is to also avoid selling stocks too early. I've had this happen so many times. Many other investors do and know how it feels. Sometimes you just want to cash out on a quick profit, really good one sometimes or whatever, and then you cash out totally. Don't. Always leave some. Cash out slowly or cash out half, whatever, but don't cash out completely. And at a certain point, again, you'll be playing on profit, so you don't really have to worry too much unless it's something that you really just don't want to be into. And that's how I look at it, at least how I do it. But um, overall, it's good to keep playing on profits. And the best way uh, is to monitor the margin and derivatives and debts and things and start decreasing those over time. Because if a crash does happen, then no one will be caught with their pants down and will be able to not just, you know, uh, hit by it, but thrive in that type of situation. You'll have the margin, what not, to be able to buy up stuff or just the cash on the side, like I said. The most important thing, though, in terms of precautions and uh, or preventatives is to live within one's means. Don't spend money if you don't have to. You know, plan your purchases, gain credit cards, you know, pay them off and get the miles, get the bonus points, get all this stuff. Choose quality over quantity always because at least I'm the type of person that will wait months sometimes to get exactly what I want and if it doesn't have to be the best, but thing that I know is going to be super durable and that's going to hold its value, that's what I'm looking at. I'm not looking at something that's just going to be used and ripped or, you know, break quickly. But you got to seek opportunities and also help others. And this whole situation, uh, I hope that I'm putting out some good information here. There's many other things that are important for precautions, but uh, overall, I think I tackled at least some good reasons like why this might happen, the catalysts and uh, precautions to take. Hopefully, uh, y'all enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, you know, I'll uh, be putting out a lot more financial education stuff going out and uh, sharing more interesting stuff. But I appreciate y'all's time. Stay safe, keep trading, making those profits, and keep looking out. So, best of luck.